Being a freelance designer is one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. However, trying to figure out a way to manage my time when everything is on me can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes. I've tried everything from extreme productivity to a more carefree, laid back approach, and at the end of the day, nothing is perfect. But in this video, I wanna share with you my current system on how I'm able to stay productive and still enjoy all aspects of my life. So I would say there are about 10 things that make up this time management system, and it all starts with a consistent morning routine. Now I've talked about a morning routine before in the past, and everyone is different and I know some creatives are slow risers but for me I like there to be the least path of resistance from when I wake up to when I start what I need to do for the day my morning routine is pretty simple I wake up brush my teeth do a protein shake something super simple like that so I don't have a lot of decision fatigue and make my coffee making the coffee as you probably know from other videos is one of my favorite things in the morning it's a nice grounding ritual and something that just makes me feel happy to wake up and get excited for the work day from there I pretty much just start working and if I'm being 100% honest, I don't even shower usually until the later part of the day because I'm super excited to just hop into my work, especially if I'm working on a cool new video or a fun client project. I think overall the main component of being productive is just really enjoying the work you do and being excited to wake up and do it every day. You can know all the life hacks in the world, but if you don't love the type of work you're doing, it's going to be really hard for you to stay productive and stay focused throughout the day. Luckily, I love creating YouTube videos and I love design. Once my morning routine is done, this is where the most most important thing comes to play and it's the deep work session. I know I've talked about this before but it's really important so I try to continue to emphasize it in different videos. A loose definition of deep work is basically deep focused work that you're doing without distractions. I usually do this type of work for four hours a day. That seems to be my kind of cap on how long I can do real deep creative work and this is like a true four hours you know no distractions no doing other things but really just sitting down and I usually do that from about 10 to 2. Deep work for me can consist of of freelance design work, personal design projects, editing YouTube videos, writing for YouTube, writing a newsletter, things like that. This deep work session is the main core in my system, but it goes hand in hand with some of the other stuff I use to manage my time. First thing that kind of goes with this is minimizing distractions. I can't get into my deep work if I'm constantly checking social media or being contacted by people about a million other things that can distract us. I think people really underestimate how much they can get done in such a short period of time when they're not constantly constantly being pulled away from technology or different things that are going to change your train of thought from the real thing you're focusing on. Some simple kind of actionable tips that I think you can use to help minimize distractions is put your phone on do not disturb and put it out of arm's reach. I know that sounds simple, but literally just the fact that you can't reach it with your hand helps you want to pick it up even less. Close out any unnecessary browser tabs because I know a lot of us are doing work on the computer, so don't have your email open or any of that other stuff that's going to give you notifications and distract you. And lastly, if you live with other people, roommates, partner, whatever, notify them that you're doing some important deep work and maybe have them not contact you or come into your office or room or whatever it is, unless it's some kind of emergency. Even something as simple as someone asking you a different question can leave that residue on your brain of a different type of thing and completely take you out of that creative flow state or that deep work with whatever you're working on. The second thing that goes with this is Parkinson's law. This is some kind of theory that a task occupies the time you allow for it. So if I allow myself two hours to write a script for YouTube or design a poster, I'll probably finish it within that chunk. On the other side, if I allow myself four hours to do that same task, I'll probably use up that four, four hours and extend the task to that amount of time. There are obvious caveats to this, like you're not going to write a whole book in four hours, even if you schedule it in that time chunk or design an entire brand identity in 30 minutes. But for the most part, I try to be realistic about how how long I think something should take and give myself that needed amount. I used to be really extreme about this and I think it kind of minimized some of the quality of my work. So nowadays if it spills over and it takes a little bit longer than I first anticipated, it's not a big deal. That's the beauty of Google Calendar. I can just extend the little color block and for the most part, I'm usually pretty accurate at judging how long something will take. The third thing that goes with the deep work is allowing for flow state. Flow state is something us creatives are probably all familiar with and it's that nice feeling when you're in the zone and and time seems to stand still and move very fast at the same time. You feel creative, 
productive and overall fulfilled. When I'm passionate about something or working on it, whether it be some kind of personal art, a fun client project, or even editing some kind of YouTube video, this is when that feeling comes with ease. The hard part about the flow state isn't getting into it, but staying in it. It takes about 15 minutes to kind of build up that creative flow state, but it can easily be broken by simple distractions. So if you're not setting aside time for creative deep work and setting up your environment without distractions, it's gonna be really hard for you to experience that flow state on a consistent basis. At the end of the day though, I've been in a lot of different environments and I know they always can't be perfect and usually they're far from that. Life is happening all around us and we can't expect all the conditions to cater perfectly to us. So what I do in addition to the no phone stuff is I'm a big proponent of wearing the over ear headphones, something like this, the Bayer Dynamics that you've probably seen in my other videos or on the podcast. And there's just something so comforting and special about wearing big over ear headphones. I know it sounds a little over dramatic, but putting on some nice music, some lo-fi, some jazz, house, any type of instrumental that helps me feel creative is super important for me, especially when I'm working on personal projects. And sometimes I catch myself just wearing the headphones and I'm not even playing any music. I'm literally just using it to kind of cancel out the outside world. So if you don't have any, I recommend picking some up, even some cheap ones on Amazon or whatever. So to be able to get into this carefree creative flow state, I can't be worrying about stressful things like money, right? We don't become designers because we love filing taxes or doing paperwork. That's where the sponsor of this video found really helps out found is an awesome all-in-one finance app and with the found business debit card you can track all your business expenses while keeping them separate from your personal finances create and send invoices and overall keep track of your income profits, and write-offs. I know for us designers, paying taxes sucks and it can be overall pretty confusing sometimes, but Found helps simplify that process and can even help you find write-offs that save you money. Everything from the software we pay way too much for every month to those cool design books you bought this year. Found is free to sign up and charges no hidden fees. And with the desktop and mobile app, you can get on top of your finances wherever you go. If this sounds cool to you, click the link in the description to create an account in minutes and find out why so many freelancers rely on found get back to designing and let found handle the rest thank you again to found for sponsoring this video so all that creative flow state and deep work and this and that doesn't really work if i don't schedule my time correctly and this is why my whole system is entirely backed by google calendar i like the analog journal and calendar for a while but it kind of began to stress me out with how rigid it was and if you had to edit something it became like a big issue i like how the digital ones you can move stuff around and it's a lot more fluid the first thing for a week or the day that I'll schedule is my daily highlight. This is an idea I learned from this productivity YouTuber named Ali Abdal and it's been super helpful. Basically, it's this idea that the most important thing that you need to do that day gets done and as long as you accomplish that, any of the other stuff is bonus. So when I go into my deep work, that's where I usually do my daily highlight and it can be anywhere from 10 to 2 p.m. For today, it's gonna to be recording this video and I might edit it later or work on some other stuff, but even if I don't, that's okay because I finished the main thing I wanted to do. On Fridays, my daily highlight is always writing the weekly newsletter. You can sign up for that in the description. It's called Glue's Letter. I send it out every week for free. All my other stuff also goes out on a color coding type of basis and I'll go over that real quick. So as you can see today, I'm recording a video. So pink is usually for recording videos or any type of content stuff. And then I usually pair other YouTube stuff with with it so like creating the thumbnail sometimes I'll just write it in one block red is for editing videos the yellow or blue can be used kind of interchangeably they can be anything from personal design work writing the newsletter working on a collage or just small other tasks like on Sundays right here uploading the content I usually just switch the color if they're right up against each other so it's easier for me to see the difference between the two green is probably the most important and this is for my deep work and it's usually reserved for client work I'll usually write the name of the project right here too but NDA stuff so light green is for social post so this is where I'm gonna be posting on different things for the day and I usually post everything around 12 p.m. Pacific time so that segues into how I balance the content creation side of things keeping track of posting on YouTube Instagram TikTok, and all that can be a mess so I just use those green little colored chunks I just place it for an hour it's not something I'm gonna be working on but that's just the schedule of when and where I'm gonna post things I also use the Facebook creator studio for Instagram which is mad helpful you can schedule post in advance and write them on the desktop, which is a lot easier than writing everything out on your phone. And I also schedule a 
lot of my tweets. The lame thing is you can only do this on the desktop or on the browser on your phone, not through the mobile app, but it still works out pretty well. I know it sounds like a lot, but I slowed down on hyper fixating on the schedule a little bit. I used to schedule everything out super far in advance and be stressed out and not giving myself enough slack. I don't want to get burnt out again and lose any of the passion for this. So I try to keep it sustainable and at a level I feel comfortable with. And obviously that level can be different for everyone. So Google Calendar and the deep work is the main focus of my time management system. But the last thing I want to mention is the five minute rule. The five minute rule is basically this rule that if something is going to take you less than five minutes, you should just do it right in that moment and get it over with. I've been using this for simple chores around the house and it's helped me minimize some of my procrastination. The only exception to this is I don't follow this five minute rule when I'm in my deep work session because I would kind of go against what I was saying about minimizing distractions and kind of changing the mode of thinking you're in. Overall though, completely mastering your time is an impossible task. So I try not to put too much pressure on yourself and you shouldn't either. However, I do hope you learned a thing or two in this video and can take something from my current system. If you enjoyed this video and want to watch more, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. That's it for now and I'll see you next time.